Good morning from Germany. So uh, today I will present uh, about the Blue Control app, which is a model used for the dynamic control and optimization of the copper refining furnace. And in this model, we use ComeUp as well as the surrogate model. So I will start with explaining the need to integrate thermochemistry into our digital platforms. So why are we doing this? And before we get into the Blue Control app, I will uh, shortly introduce the process that the uh, app is modeling, which is the Kappa refining process. Afterwards, I will explain the functionalities of the Blue Control app, and I will talk a little uh, in details about the surrogate models behind it. And finally, I will show you a demo for briefly for some few minutes of the Blue Control app. Okay, so why do we need to integrate thermochemistry into our digital platforms? So digitalization has been a major goal for SMS in the recent years, and I believe that it will remain so in the future. And when we talk about digitalization, it's not about the internal process within SMS, but you also want to offer digital solutions or digital applications to our customers to make their life easier and to increase their productivity and profits. And one way to do this is that we are offering the so-called digital twinning resource systems. In those uh, systems, in those digital platforms, we want to integrate our expertise, our in-depth understanding of the technology, as well as our theoretical knowledge. And we believe that thermochemistry, computational thermochemistry, have to be an important part of those digital twins or those digital platforms. So how can we do this? Uh, in fact, I personally have 13 years with uh, using uh, computational thermochemistry software, mainly FactSage and Simusage. However, there has always been a need for me to run FactSage calculation within an integrated development environment. So we have the SMS Digital now as a subsidiary, which is developing those digital solutions and they mainly use Python or Python-based integrated uh, development environments. And we wish to integrate the, uh, the calculations, the fact stage calculation directly into those environments. So this was not possible uh, so far. So on uh, once we saw that come up for Python has been developed and became commercially available, I think that was about 2019, we immediately recognized this as a chance for us to achieve this, this goal because uh, it made it possible to import come up to import those equilibrium calculations as a Python package directly into our uh, integrated development environment and gave us direct access to equilibrium calculations. But we also use the uh, packages from EM Thermo from Xmenta, who are our, a partner of us and of GTT. So Xmenta have uh, uh, provide additional functions which make uh, calculations in uh, come up easier and quicker to do. Such functions are like reading essay tables, so analysis directly into, uh, into come up, generating streams, working with streams, as well as post processing and visualizing the results. Yeah, and this has established the conditions, the right conditions to develop the blue control. But uh, what is the process that the blue control is modeling? As I said, that is the copper refiner process. And this process consists of several steps. So we start with melting the copper scraps, so different uh, copper scraps. And afterwards, we oxidize the molten liquid, the molten copper, to remove the impurities from it. And once we're done with oxidation, reduction starts in order to remove the oxygen uh, excessive that was a result from the oxidation. And uh, finally, when we're done, we can begin with the anode casting. So what does the customer face as challenges uh, in controlling and optimizing the process? So uh, the customer deals with an increasing complexities of impurities, so they're becoming uh, more impurities are coming there and the content is also higher. 
and the, this makes the, the metallurgical refining process more complex. And often uh, there's a lack of metallurgical knowledge from the operator who's operating the furnace. Uh, so actually the decision or important decision, they rely on flu individuals that are not always available. And if so, it, the decision is not always so easy to take and this can lead to human errors. And we believe that with the blue control, we can make the life easier for our customers because he will rely on blue control for the decision and uh, it does not have to be bound to few individuals. So what does the blue control consist of? Uh, I would say there are two main core options or core um, yeah, uh, parts of the blue control. It can be used for simulation or it can be used for optimization. And uh, for the simulation, uh, the blue control input, uh, we start, you have to specify the target data. That is the aim purity of the copper that you want to get. The also aim uh, or the maximum content on impurities in PPMs. You also uh, need to input what is the actual liquid copper composition after the scrap is molten. Uh, what is the fluxes that you're planning to charge? What is their weight? Uh, as well as the other temperature, uh, other uh, variables such as the temperature of your feed, the oxidation rate uh, of the oxidizing gas, the reduction rate of the reducing gas, and how long do you plan to, uh, for the your process, how long do you plan, for example, to blow the oxygen? And uh, what you will get then from the simulation would be the blowing pattern in form that you will get the evolution of the liquid, the slag and the off gas phases uh, during this process time and the uh, composition of each phase during this process time as well. But in fact, the target data that are inputted here, they are not directly considered into the simulation because in fact, uh, the, they are used just for visualization. So you will see based on the input data that you gave, where are you going to end up at the end of your process once the process time is finished, uh, once the refining, for example, is done. So you will see how close or how far were you actually from your targets. But if you want to meet those targets, so if you want to achieve this given a couple percentage that you that you specify, if you want to make sure that the impurities level is the permitted level here, then you have to use the optimization. So in the optimization, this brings us to the optimization option. So in the optimization, you no longer specify the fluxes amount. You no longer specify how long you blow the, the, the heat. You actually, uh, the optimization will calculate that. It will calculate what is the optimal fluxes weight and composition combination of fluxes and what is the optimal process time. So how long you need to, to, to blow the heat in order to achieve those targets data in here. And um, yeah, however, you can imagine that the optimization is actually a high number of simulations. So it runs many scenarios uh, of fluxes, composition of uh, blowing time. And then, um, yeah, so each optimization is hundreds of simulations, depending on your constraints and on your targets. And each simulation is about an average of 30 uh, cam up calls because we simulate dynamically. So depending on the time step that you specify for the dynamic process, you will run maybe 30 or 60 simulation, simulations, uh, cam up calls per one simulation. So in the end, you will end up with, if we assume that come up takes one second for one calculation, uh, which is about reasonable depending on the case, then you will see that you will end up with hours. So at least few hours to get an optimization result. However, the customer does not have this time. So even a few minutes uh, can be actually too long for him. And this uh, can make the app unsuitable or not suited for online applications. So then we can only use it for offline application and not on site. So the solution that, that we have developed for this is for to, to use it online is to use the so-called surrogate models. 
So this brings us to the next chapter, what is the surrogate model? I will not go into uh, the details here. So the surrogate model is a predictive model which we train to accurately uh, predict or map the input and output of the copper refining process. So that what we do is that we generate offline a large number of input output scenarios with the blue control. So we use blue control simulation. We use come up to generate a large amount of data of calculations. And then the surrogate models maps those input and output relationships using a neuron by means of a neural network architecture. So why did you decide for a neural network? Because from experience, it is suitable for nonlinear cases and the physical model or the physics behind the, uh, yeah, the, thermo, the computational thermodynamics is a nonlinear uh, case. Okay, so I will uh, just jump to show some of the results of the surrogate models of this input output uh, mapping of blue control results. Uh, so you see here the predicted versus observed uh, behavior of the copper mass of the zinc in PPM, of the nickel in PPM, and of the lead in PPM. So the predicted uh, data, they are predicted by the surrogate model, the observed data, which are from the simulation of blue control or um, yeah, of the physical model uh, using chem up, using Gibbs energy minimization. And you can see here that we have already at this stage an excellent agreement between the observed and the predicted behavior. So we are quite satisfied with the results. Uh, so due to time limitations, I went quickly through the concepts. If you want to, if you're curious and you want to get more details, how did we do this? Please check our EMC paper just recently uh, published and presented on the conference. Uh, because now I would like to take some minutes to make a demo of the blue control. So to, to show the uh, calculations of blue control. All right, so due to time limitations, I will not go through the simulation options. So this is the uh, yeah the user interface of Blue Control. We see the options here. You can start a simulation or you can start an optimization. So we will start an optimization here. I will make it run, it's a video. A little too quick, so I will stop it every now and then. So the first, we start uh, in the optimization to specify the targets. What do we want to achieve on purity? So the copper content in percent by the end of the process can be specified here. Where, whereas for the other impurities, it's in PPM. It has to be this, um, I would say, precise. So for all of the other elements, you can specify what is your target. If you leave it as zero, the app will understand that it's not a target for the uh, optimization. So we see we have included here aluminum, nickel, zinc, tin, lead, iron, silica, and manganese so far, and we are planning with uh, to add, as we develop the app, to add more and more components into it, in the targets as well as in the analysis. So once you specified your target, now you have to specify what is the actual state of your heat. So how much metal do you have? How much copper? What is the initial or the actual temperature prior to the refining process? And what is the actual composition? So it can be an estimation from your side, but we recommend that after the scrap is molten, that a measurement is made to get uh, accurate results and thus the benefits of the model. Okay, so here, now you continue, you see the weight, 64 tons and the actual starting um, content of those metals prior to the refining. And now the most importantly for the optimization is specifying the constraints. So if you have constraint, what is the maximum slag mass at the end that is allowed, you can give it here. Uh, you can specify which fluxes you select. So up to now, we only have three fluxes, but more and more fluxes are planned to be part of the optimization in the future. If you have constraints, what is the minimum uh, amount that should be inputted or the maximum of fluxes, you can specify it, but this is optional. So uh, 
you can specify the constraints if you have them or not, but you can also specify um, other constraints as well if you need maximum, minimum of the uh, content of the percentage or if you have some constraints as we see here. So we selected three fluxes, we put some min and max and we have uh, here, for example, you can set a constraint for the iron to silica at the end of the process, like a minimum of 0.5, a maximum of 1.5 of ratio. And we are planning to add more and more constraint or to make this customer depending on customer. Okay, so uh, finally, we if we have other process information such as the reduction rate of the gas or the oxidation, the volume rate of the oxidizing gas, we can specify it and we run the calculation. And you can see this is real time. So actually, we got the results are finished within seconds uh, due to the surrogate model mapping. So we're not running actually, uh, yeah, uh, simulations or blue control, but we are running the surrogate model here. And we already got a result, as you see, which corresponds to many optimal points. So we want to give the operator not only one optima, but many optimal points, depending on he can make a compromise. So here, uh, for example, uh, the copper mass is on the x-axis and the sum of all impurities is on the y-axis. And of course, the lower the impurities are, the lower will be the copper mass in the melt, uh, the, uh, yeah, and uh, there are actually uh, many optimal points that you can choose from. If he clicks on the point, he will get the, sorry, he will get the uh, data at the end. So we'll come back here. And yeah, you see by clicking on the point, you will see what is the final copper mass and what is the impurities in them and what what was the fluxes combination that has led to this uh, optimal point. Okay, so at this stage, I am uh, done with the demo as well as with the presentation. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I'm eager to hear if you have some comments or questions. Thank you.